Okay, I wanted to do something a little bit different, uh, a different video than what I normally do as far as drawing and fusion. I actually wanted to show a video of uh, assembling an airplane that I drew up in fusion. This is one of the first designs that I did in fusion successfully. I'd still done a few others before, but then I got to this one. So this is like the second or third one that I cut out. And I've had it sitting around for a while, and I said, well, I need to go ahead and build it. It's a trainer. It's actually based off of... Uh, the Pilot Junior 100, which was like a 10 cubic inch size, uh, you know, three channel trainer. But I tend to like these little airplanes, they're fun. But I thought I would make a video of me assembling this. And, you know, if people have never built an airplane, this is a good, a good way to learn. Um, I do want to say, like, I already pulled all the plywood parts out of the sheet. So that's why they're loose like this, because I wanted to test it out and see how it fit. And everything fit perfect I, I couldn't ask for anything better and you know I it this is probably the the best way that I've ever built model airplanes I I'm selling off a bunch of kits because I can make anything I want so anyway without uh, further ado let's uh, let's get into putting this thing together all right so here we go and we'll start uh, working on this fuselage um, and this is my method of doing it, and if you've never built a, a, a wood airplane, maybe this will help you, uh, you know, with other kits or whatever. Or if you want one of these, I could cut you one of these. This is, uh, like I mentioned, the uh, Junior 100 in the nice little three-channel trainer. I, I fly a wide range of things, but sometimes I just like to put around the sky. It's, for me, seeing my creation come from... You know, especially in CAD and then coming to this and then eventually flying is really fun. So if you've never built a plane before or a wood plane before, you're going to need a few different things. Um, one, you'll need a flat building surface. This is, I've had this bulletin board is what it is. I've had it probably 40 years. Um, yeah, 40 years. I've built 100 airplanes or more on this air, on this board. It served me well, and it's still going. It's actually old school one where it has homosote and a layer of cork on each side, and it stayed flat all these years. It's been fantastic. And back in the day, we we used a lot of pins to build, and so you would need something to stick pins into. But I don't do that quite as much anymore since most of the stuff that I cut out is all tab and slot construction makes it a little bit easier and I'll get into more tools as we go along but just for now you know you need a flat building surface if you use your your better halves kitchen table make sure you uh, put something on there because you don't want to mess that up um, one of the things I want to talk about too is when you're building a fuselage or when you're building an airplane it's very easy to build two lefts or two rights of what should be a left and a right and with the fuselage I always turn my my sides you know either bottom to bottom or top to top so I know when I put my doublers on they're gonna be on the right side I'm not gonna have any problem with that and so that's just a quick note and the first thing we're gonna do is glue the doublers on and I'll talk a little bit about adhesives that you need to do that with um, so in this day and age, a lot of CA, or cyanoacrylate, or however you say it, is used by a lot of people, and it's good, and it has its purpose. I don't use it as much. I used to use it a long time ago when I built a lot, but I don't, I don't quite use it as much because it leaves hard spots that are harder than the material that you're glued together, and then you kind of get a bump that you can't get, get rid of. Um, so... My go-to for nearly all my all my wood joints is an alafitic rosin, and this is the same as like tight bond or something else. I've been using this SIG stuff, and I really like it because it sands really nice. It's a little bit softer than say the you know tight bond and some of the other wood glues that you might get at the hardware store. This one just seems to have a better formula for building airplanes and I like it because I can sand it away. 
But now when it comes to putting doublers together, or here we have to epoxy this firewall together because it comes in two pieces. I didn't have any quarter inch, so I just cut it out of two pieces of eighth. Um, epoxy. This is what you want to use. I, epoxy acts differently than the other two adhesives. Um, for one thing, this stuff dries um, usually with moisture is what creates, what kicks it off. And it, you don't get as good of a coverage and a bond, plus the CA is rigid, and you, whereas the epoxy stays flexible. And aliphatic rosin kind of needs air to dry, and it doesn't have the strong adhesion properties as epoxy will on a flat surface like this. And since it's not going to get air throughout the whole thing, you kind of need something that, with the hardener, is what kicks it off. So... That's why I use epoxy on these kind of joints. Um, you can use whatever, but I just highly recommend using epoxy here. It's going to make it a whole lot easier. Um, so I'm going to mix up a little bit of epoxy, and I'll do one side, and I'll stop the video, and then we'll come back and uh, and do the other. And Well, I'll have all this epoxy, and then we'll go into the rest of the assembly. But... Normally, I, I use a scale, but I don't have my scale here, so... And also, you don't have to worry about epoxy aging, like this is kind of yellow, but it's fine. It'll still work. As long as it's not in a place that's going to be seen, you're okay. And you want to do equal parts of hardener and rosin. You know, about like that. And then I keep some alcohol handy. You can use denatured alcohol. Rubbing alcohol works okay. Denatured's a little better, but it still works, and then I keep some paper towels handy for cleanup, because you don't want to make a mess. But anyway, I'm just going to mix this up, uh, take it about a minute, and you kind of want to get, uh, you want to get it mixed up really good. And I should also mention there's different um, times or, you know, epoxies that, that will uh, set up at different times. You can get five-minute epoxy, but, and I have that, and I use that for some applications, but I tend to like the 15 minute. It's actually stronger, or even 30 minute. Um, you're going to get more adhesion with them, but you also get a little more, you know, work time, whereas a five minute can kick off pretty fast. So I just want to make sure and get all that mixed up really good. Yeah, there we go. All right, so you just spread it on there as evenly as possible. Yeah, I, I've been building airplanes since, jeez, uh, I was 12, so 40 some odd years ago. It's been a great hobby. I know there's a lot of discussion about wood versus foam, and there's some foam airplanes that fly pretty well, but I don't know. Wood, when you build it yourself, and you build it out of wood, you have, you got something, you know? You, you put something, you put some energy into it that you're going to reap the benefits from in more ways than one. You actually accomplished something, whereas if you buy a, an ARF or a foam ARF, well... You didn't put any effort into it, and yeah, it may be fun, but it you don't have the investment of time, and you doesn't have the same value. So one of the things I want to make sure is not get uh, that in there. Okay. So these doublers help out with the uh, with giving strength down here on this bottom section where the landing gear and all that are, and I'm gonna. Make sure, that's not the right one. I just want to make sure that um, that's all lining up where I want it to. Just for good measure. And that looks pretty good. And then what I'll do, I'll put a weight on here or something like that until this stuff cures. And let me put the top doubler on. And I'm sorry if you hear my neighbors, that microphone's really sensitive. Alrighty. 
Yeah, these doublers add a lot of strength and critical stress points on, a, on an airplane. Um, I will say that a lot of airplanes back like when this was designed originally in the 80s, they tend to be overkill with the material and we can save a lot of weight um, with newer building techniques and stuff like that but nonetheless it's still fine I'm getting all that epoxy in my window I'm going to have to wipe all that out And you're usually going to get some on your hand, too. There's just nothing you can do about it, unless you wear gloves, which I do sometimes. Some people are allergic to epoxy, so hopefully you're not. If you are allergic to epoxy, you can use contact cement for these type of um, applications. So, but like I said, the aliphatic rosin doesn't work as, good, as well, and neither does the... Um, the super glues. Alright, get that right there. Line that up. And I'm going to go ahead and do the other side and uh, put some weight on them. And when they get done, I'll, I'll be back and we'll start working some more.